peace be to you from God our Father and from our risen and living Lord Christ Jesus. Amen. Today we're going to spend a little time in the gospel and we're going to season it with a little salt from the words of Paul in his epistle letter to the Romans. Begin with the word of prayer. Prayer, dear Father, that uh, you will richly, uh, uh, richly pour out your Holy Spirit on all of us, that we will hear through his power your gospel, the good news of the risen and resurrected and living Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. So, while Jesus walked this earth, he did many things. And in our gospel today, we hear that Jesus went through all the towns and villages, teaching in their synagogues, preaching the good news of the kingdom. When he saw the crowds, he had compassion on them because they were harassed and helpless like sheep without a shepherd. You see, Jesus needed to go teaching and preaching because at that time, the religious leaders were not clearly teaching and preaching God's words. Instead of preaching and teaching from God's word from Scripture, they were adding their own and they were adding laws. They were, they were piling up works on the people to try and help them earn salvation. How foolish this was, because these religious leaders should have known. They, they knew the Scriptures and they should have known clearly that all of salvation work is God's work. God does all the work for salvation, no matter how many laws they piled on, no matter how many works they wanted the people to do, no matter how much they made them feel helpless or harassed, they would never earn what God has freely, freely given through the Messiah. And this was the problem. They were not preaching the Messiah, that the Messiah would come and that the Messiah would live the perfect life and be the all-atoning final sacrifice for all sin. This was not being clearly teached or preached. I guess I should have said taught. Teached isn't a word, right? But anyway, so Jesus was clearly teaching and preaching and he is Jesus is the good news of the kingdom. He is the Messiah through which all will be saved. So that was then. And you know, after Jesus rose from the dead, after his sacrificial death on the cross, lay in the tomb, and on the third day he rose from the dead, he continued teaching. And I love the story of uh, how he came up to the two uh, Disciples who were walking on the way to Emmaus and how Jesus opened their minds to the prophets and Moses and how all the scripture was open to them so they knew that Jesus was the Messiah. Wasn't it burning in them? And until he ascended into heaven, Jesus continued to teach and preach. That was then. And until he comes back, till Jesus promised return, till he returns, there are going to be times, just like at the time when Jesus walked this earth up until then, when religious leaders and others will not clearly preach and teach and proclaim and live the true salvation that God has freely and given through Jesus. And when it's not freely and clearly teached, taught, and preached. People start thinking that they need to do things, do works. And here is the devil who continues to roam and prowl the earth. And he is praying on people, whispering in some times, shouting at other times, did God really say? And that's when people start thinking that they need to do things instead of freely receiving what God has so freely given through His Son, Christ Jesus, and through the power of the Holy Spirit, freely given by God the Father, proceeding from God the Son, those who have been brought to faith by the Holy Spirit know that at just the right time, when 
We were still powerless. Christ died for the ungodly. At just the right time, when you were still powerless, Christ died for you. Christ is. Jesus Christ is. God's freely given grace. What else did Jesus do? Well, Jesus went through all the towns and villages teaching. Jesus went through all the towns and villages healing every disease and sickness. When he saw the crowds, he had compassion on them because they were helpless and harassed like sheep without a shepherd. The people of Jesus' time, sick just like we are. The doctors and the medicine at that time, not as sophisticated as now. So Jesus knew certainly that they needed physical healing. And Jesus' physical healing was a glimpse into the kingdom, the kingdom of God, the kingdom of heaven, which is near. So Jesus healed. We're sick. Many of us physically sick. Time and place does not limit the healing power of Jesus, of God. Pray for healing. Jesus is healing. But the physical healing that Jesus did, a glimpse into the, 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 the kingdom of God and the glorified, perfect bodies, but all those who were physically healed by Jesus, whether then or now, through medicine or through other means that Jesus, God, may use, Still, physical death, physical death will happen unless Jesus returns. But every time that Jesus heals, every time that Jesus heals, then or now, is a glimpse into that physical healing that also gives us a glimpse into the sin sickness, the sin sickness that everyone has. And it is only through God's freely given grace that sin sickness goes away. These people were helpless to heal themselves. We are helpless to heal ourselves. Though our medicine today might heal a lot more sicknesses than in the day of, that Jesus walked, we still cannot cure physical death. We haven't overcome that. But God, but God, through perfect life of Jesus through his sacrificial all atoning death on the cross and through his resurrection on that third day our risen and living Lord freely pours out his grace to heal sin sickness now it was after Jesus healed after he taught, after he preached, that he called his disciples to him. And when he called them to him, he said to them, go, go, he sends them out. He says, go, preach this message. The kingdom of heaven is near Jesus had given them the example. Jesus had lived and walked and he taught and he preached. And now he freely gives the disciples the power to preach and teach that Jesus is the Messiah, that Jesus is the good news of the kingdom. But even more, he says, go, heal the sick. Cleanse those who have leprosy. Heal the sick. Drive out demons. As Jesus walked, he healed. He cleansed lepers. He drove out demons. And now he's given the power to heal, cleanse, and drive out to his disciples. Jesus is healing. But did you hear this part? Jesus said, as you go, raise the dead. Now we know Jesus certainly did 
raise, physically raise people from the dead back to physical life. And now he's given the power to do so to his disciples. And we know Peter and Paul raised, physically raised people from the dead back to physical life. But through the power of the Holy Spirit, through the power of the Holy Spirit, God has given each person he has called the ability to raise people from the dead. To raise people from eternal death. Through the power of the Holy Spirit, through the power of the Holy Spirit, God gives all he has called the power to share his word, to clearly, to clearly proclaim that at just the right time, when I was still powerless, Christ died for me. And through God's word, through God's Holy Spirit, sin sickness and the eternal death, the eternal separation from God will be taken away. Jesus, while you were still powerless, died for your sins. Jesus, at great cost, at great cost to him, left the glory of heaven. He walked this earth in physical form, in the flesh. He had physical life. And as he walked and lived, he did not ever once walk out of the will of God. Always following the will of God, Jesus walked to the cross. The great cost, the great pain. Remember him in the Garden of Gethsemane, praying that the great cost would be taken from him. Yet, not my will, Jesus said. Your will, God. Your will, my Father, be done. And the great cost of the beating, the flogging, the humiliation, the denial, the betrayal, the abandonment, finally being nailed to the cross, dying, the great cost that Jesus paid for all sin, for all people, for all time, great cost that Jesus paid for you. The great cost that Jesus paid for me. So that his grace might be freely and graciously and abundantly poured out at great cost, but freely given. So, freely you have received freely give. And how might how might the free gift of grace through the power of the Holy Spirit look? Well, it might look like uh, helping that neighbor who you uh, might not particularly know so very well or who you might not particularly like so well helping that neighbor do some lawn work. Because after all, while, while uh, we, you, I, were still powerless, while we were still sinful, Christ died for us. Or maybe it's simply smiling at that stranger because after all, God demonstrates his own love for us in this. While we were still sinners, while we were strangers to him, Christ died for us. Or uh, maybe it would be like when you ask someone, how are you? You actually care and want to hear how that person is. Because after all, when we were God's enemies, when we were sin sick, God reconciled 
us to him through the death of his son, our Lord, Christ Jesus. You know, I'm reminded of a story. A little boy, a little, he was a little Christian boy. He had been baptized as a baby, and he grew up in the church. His parents uh, would take him to worship, and uh, they would pray before meals. You know, typical things that most Christian families do. On this particular day, he's about four years old. His neighbor, an older man, was sitting on his front porch, and uh, the old man was mourning the death of his wife. You know how it is, even when a Christian uh, saved by the blood of Jesus physically dies, is in heaven, in the eternal glory, still those who are left behind mourn. And this man on this particular day was mourning. And the little boy walked outside, walked up onto the man's porch, and sat in his lap. And his mother saw the little boy sitting in the old man's lap. And after a time, the little boy got down out of the lap of the man and walked home. And when he got home, his mother said, what is it that you were doing with Mr. Smith? And the little boy said, I was just helping him cry. The power of the Holy Spirit that that little boy had freely received at his baptism enabled him to have compassion for that old man who felt helpless and harassed as he remembered his dead wife. Freely you have received. Freely give. How might the power of the Holy Spirit be shown in your life, in my life? How, how might it be? Now, not every person, not every Christian is called to teach and preach. Ah, but every Christian, God has freely and graciously and powerfully given the Holy Spirit so that whenever opportunity arises, where and when, as a Holy Spirit-empowered Christian, you can share maybe these words that St. Paul, that St. Paul gave us. But God demonstrates his own love for us in this. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. For if when we were God's enemies, we were reconciled to him through the death of his son, how much more having been reconciled, shall we be saved through his life? We have been saved through his life. We have been reconciled to God graciously and freely through Jesus' costly death. That we have been freely and graciously given life through Jesus' life. So where and when you have opportunity through the power of the Holy Spirit. Share what God has given you. And you very well may raise someone to eternal life, cleansing them of their sin sickness through the power of the Holy Spirit so that now they recognize their sin, they turn to the cross of Jesus, and will have everlasting life. As you go, preach this message. The kingdom of heaven is near. Freely you have received. Freely give. Amen. And may the power of the Holy Spirit freely and powerfully given to you empower you to freely give. Amen. Please, let us stand and sing our offertory.